in the British Museum and we're looking at the Black George icon, which is from about 1400, 1450. So this is a Russian icon and you can see there's a bit of Cyrillic writing up there saying George, who this is. And there are lots of images of St. George around. Anytime you see images of a knight on horseback stabbing a dragon, usually with a big long spear, sometimes he's saving a princess, that's St. George. But there's no princess here. No, it's a more of a distilled version. So Often that... we're used to seeing him though in knight's metal armor. And yeah, he doesn't look like a knight here. He looks like he's just kind of wearing a nice little tunic and a, a very flowy red cape and some nice yeah. bright Red There's tights. nothing particularly that's going to protect him. But what we do see, because of that very neatly composed billowy red cape, is his halo. There are little bits of gold left on the circle around his head. And that's how we know that he's not just any old man riding through the countryside killing a dragon, like you do. He's St. George. And that's the fact that they've put the, the cape flowing up like that, that's definitely a purposeful compositional point that they want to highlight the halo, don't they? And they draw our attention to it. Mm. That cape drags your eye up to the halo and then across to the name. Because, the inscription, George. Right, because sometimes we see icons with a whole gold background, but we don't here because this wasn't a scene that took place in heaven, no. illuminated by the light of heaven, no, which he, is what he, the gold And does. it's earthly. I mean, the ground, is, you know, he's on ground. There's a horizon there, which you would never normally see. Now, the other thing that I'm struck by is the big black horse. I mean, it's called the Black George icon, and usually you think of George on a white horse. And that's interesting because, again, this is a Byzantine icon, and the white horse is often associated with crusader art, so it's often with Western ideas of St. George. And don't forget that the Crusades came through, they stayed in Constantinople for a bit, and they said, oh, we're going to go on and fight in the Holy Land. But they were very jealous of everything Constantinople had, and while they were there, they were like, while we're here, we're just going to sack and take everything and take over here, and they ruled there for 50 years. So if the West associates St. George with a white horse and Crusader triumphant sort of attitude, the Byzantine world obviously doesn't see that in that same way. It's very unusual, though. There are a few more in existence, but they are very, very rare. Your eye is kind of drawn down, there's this long, thin, diagonal red line of George's spear. It doesn't really look very strong. It's not no, it really... <laughs> it's not, it's it not like kind of a thin laser. Modern St. George, perhaps, killing the dragon with mm. a laser. But there is that dragon. I mean, it kind of looks like a big snake all coiled up down it, at the yeah, bottom. Yeah, it's definitely coiled up in itself. It looks like it's kind of knotted round its tail, yeah. almost going to eat its own tail there, struggling. But the moment of death hasn't happened yet, has it? He's frozen in that moment of just about to impale him, just about to succeed. And it's interesting because often in Western art, they are, they're commenting about George as the knight in the armour, in the clothes, and his physical, his personal ability to overcome the dragon. And in Byzantine art, they're saying that George is good and that the dragon is evil. And it's this continual struggle that we're all having all the time of trying to overcome falsehood and evil. So he would never have actually had a dead dragon at his feet because that would mean, oh, it's finished, we're done. But it's not, it's an eternal struggle for all of humankind. Because he's of course put that dragon almost completely buried in the lower register below that line of the landscape horizon that you see. And George and the horse, with the exception of a couple of feet, is totally above in the realm of the sky, emphasizing the upper realm, the upper register, exactly. and the earthly temporality of the dragon on the bottom. Exactly. And the horse is extremely elegant, isn't it? Those lines and the legs that are splayed out in such a beautiful way. And it really fills the icon. It draws you completely from left to right. And this icon actually has a very interesting story because it was found being used as a shutter on a barn in a village in northern Russia. And it was actually a different painting at the time. It had some 18th century painting on top. And they took that off and then they discovered a 17th century painting underneath and they cleaned it again and they were like whoa, whoa look we've got this 1400 uh, St. George and so we're really really lucky to have this here to marvel over today the continual struggle that George is doing and that we're doing.